All right, welcome to part two of this uh, edition of DSP's Inbox. Um, pretty cool, huh? This is a souvenir that I got when I was down in Tennessee for the Super Battle Opera qualifiers back in July. I haven't really worn it around anywhere or worn it anywhere, but I'm sure there'll be some use for it in future videos and things like that. And, hell, I just think it's pretty cool to have a real authentic Stetson cowboy hat. And it is the Stetson. It's an actual buffalo uh, felt. It's not that fake imitation crap. And... From what the guy told me, this is going to last quite a while because Stetson's a really, really good name brand hat. So, pretty cool. Um, so let's get right back to it because I know that you know that last part, I only answered a couple questions, but that last answer was really long. Um, so the next question. Dear DSP, I know you play many games throughout the year and you sometimes have no time to work on side projects. That's true. Unfortunately, there's some side projects I've wanted to work on and I just can't get to them. But have you ever thought of doing a side project for a time when maybe you have some extra time where you can ask the fans for classic or old games to do a playthrough of? So, for example, do a game off of maybe an emulator or one of your classic systems for PlayStation 1, NES, Nintendo 64, etc. And that's from Riley Hellman. Well, that's a great suggestion. Um, in fact, some of my friends have actually uh, asked me, why don't I do like a DSP... Uh, an 8-bit DSP or something like that, or a DSP, you know, old-school DSP or something like that channel where I play all old-school games, and the truth of the matter is I have a working NES, I have a working Super NES, I have a working Sega Genesis, you know, I have all these old systems that still work, and I actually have some older games, like I have DuckTales for the NES, which is fucking amazing, I've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which is hard as fuck, I never actually beat it back when I was a kid, if you can believe it. Um, I've got some cool games for that Super NES. I've got some stuff that I could play if I wanted to, so, um, it's a possibility. It's a possibility that I end up not only maybe playing classic games, but I play it on a classic console, too. Um, and actually, I'm going to have this tie in with another question, because it actually does tie in with a good question here that someone said. Let's see. Here we go. It ties into this next question. Hey DSP, if there's a new game that you're not going to, to, to buy or make a playthrough of, can we s send you the game as a donation? So for example, Demon's Souls or Mafia 2, both games we want to see you play but you didn't get a chance to buy or, or, or play them, can we send it to you as a donation? And I guess what he's asking, is, this is from Kenny by the way, thank you Kenny, I guess he's asking, can you donate and maybe I'll play it later? The answer is sure. Um, first of all, I'm willing to accept any donations. Now, please, I'm not saying just start sending me shit willy-nilly, all kinds of crazy stuff. If you're going to send me something, run it by me. And what I'm actually thinking of doing, obviously, unfortunately, being what it is, I can't give away my real address because you never know what's going to happen with some crazies out there. But I'm sure I could find a forwarding address or maybe I could um, have it go to, say, you know, a P.O. box that I could maybe take out uh, locally here. And I'd be, I'd be willing to accept donations. And going along those lines, like I said, if someone eventually maybe wants to see me play some classic games and you have them, you could donate them for the NES and the Super NES. Because those games are a lot harder to get your hands on. So, sure, in the future, not only yes, I guess both answers are yes. Yes, I would definitely be willing to accept uh, or, or to, to accept donations. In fact, again, I want to thank that person who donated the, the Wii to me. Because if it wasn't for that, I would have never played Metroid Other M. And uh, also, yes, I would be more than willing to play older classic games. It's just something to think about. Some food for thought. Okay. Next, excuse me for one second. Go to try again. Ah, okay. Um, next question uh, is from Mike the Swede, so a Swedish fan, and he says, "Hi Phil, I just want to say that I really enjoy the work. Enjoy the work you're doing. Keep it going." And now for the question: Of all the games that you've played through, which one has the best boss fight ever, and why? Um, that really is a wide-reaching question because keep in mind that I've been playing games since the Atari. Um, actually, the first home video game that I ever played was Pong. It was actually one of those systems from the 70s that you just plug into, you know, your TV and it was just two fucking white bars and a ball going back and forth. And that basic. And I played all games through the Atari 2600, 7800, the NES, the Super NES, the Genesis, the... I kind of skipped a generation of, say, like, the Saturn, the Sega CD. Those I really didn't play. My first CD system was the PlayStation 1. Um, and then going along with that, the Nintendo 64, and then as we got to the new generations, the Dreamcast, and now all the modern systems. Xbox, I did have an Xbox. Actually, I had the, got the PlayStation 2 way before I ever got an Xbox, simply because a lot of the 
fighting games were out on PlayStation 2 way before they came out on Xbox. So, And then, you know, the modern system. So, I guess, thinking about all the games that I've played, and I mean, I'm talking fighting games, shooting games, role-playing games, um, you know, adventure games, action games, puzzle games. I mean, there's been a lot of really good boss battles. Um, I mean, one of the ones that comes to mind that is always going to stay ingrained in my head is the end of Resident Evil 1 when you have to fight the tyrant because you fight the guy and you think he's invincible. You, the rocket launcher comes down. You hit him with like 10 rockets. This guy is still going to fucking die. You're like, Jesus, maybe you, you can't win. Maybe this game, you know, back then, again, unless you were, uh, you know, really into the gaming magazines and things like that, you, might, you didn't even necessarily know how the game ended unless you went on the internet and cheated because you were on fucking AOL and you were a loser. But, um, no, I'm just kidding. I was on AOL the whole time, too. But, um... Yeah, I mean, I just remember thinking, does this guy ever die? And finally, I killed him the, after like 10 tries. I was like, holy shit, thank God I finally killed him. And that was pretty epic because that whole game was epic. Let's face it, that game just created a whole new genre of gaming. It was extremely original. You know, Even though the controls sucked, it actually added to the horror aspect of the game. Because you're like, damn, if I were really there, I'd run the fuck away. But I can't get my character to turn because the controls suck dick. So it was pretty funny. Um, but overall, overall... I would have to say, if you were to ask me what was the best boss fight ever, I would probably say that if you want to talk comedy factor, like the funniest boss fight, would have to be Ultros from Final Fantasy VI. Because this guy shows up multiple times in the game. Every time he's talking shit, he's acting like an asshole. And he's funny as hell, too. And he's just so out of place. A, a talking octopus... You know, it just totally... The rest of the game is pretty serious, but this one talking octopus is just acting really weird. And um, and he comes back near the end of the game, too. You have to fight him again. You're like, I can't believe I have to fight this guy again. Unbelievable. But uh, if you really want me to say what I think my favorite boss fight of all time is, would actually, again, be Final Fantasy VI. And I would have to say the entire last dungeon. And the reason I say that is because the last dungeon contains several high-level bosses that you never fought in the game before. They were all original, they were all interesting, and because the game actually forced you at that time to break up your party, you never really had your best party with you. So it really challenged you to figure out how to beat each of these new bosses with a party that's not really your best, and then at the end of the game, all your parties regroup to fight the ultimate boss, which is Kefka, who through the whole game he was the, the antagonist, but now, all of a sudden, he's merging, he's become a god, and he's mer his godlike powers, and he merges with hundreds of bodies to become this giant fucking monstrous thing, and you think that's the last boss, but you know better, because you know Kefka's such a cocky asshole, when you defeat the fucking giant mound of bodies at the top, there's Kefka, butt-fucking-naked, with angel wings on, looking like that favorite portrait of uh, David reaching out to touch God's finger, and he's just, like, fucking pointing at you to make fun of you. He's like, ah-ha, fuck you, I'm God now. And the music was awesome. Like, it was the soundtrack of that game, I just can't tell you, amazing. The, those, the, the, I, for, I have no fucking idea how to pronounce his name. Nuobu Uomitsuwowodo. And I know I just did him did, uh, a lot of this, this justice there. Injustice, sorry. But amazing this composer and I just love the music from the game the final boss fights music just from when the boss fight starts you're climbing level by level up this giant monster and then finally you fight Kefka and he's really like God it's just amazing and um, I have to say one of the most epic fights ever still to this day I can hum the entire song I've never forgotten the music it's so catchy it's so interesting it's just so epic because it's the final fight of the game so that's my pick for best boss battle of all time Let's see here. This is another good one that I really liked. This guy, I'm going to give you the short version. Basically, he says, last year, Ghostbusters, the video game, was created. And a lot of people thought that it was the most successful movie-to-video game conversion ever. That other people had tried to make video games out of movies, and they weren't successful. This one seemed to be a true sequel, only because it had the original writers, you know, the people who were involved in the original cult hit, actually made the video game. And his question is, what other cult classic movies would you most want to be turned into video games and why? And that's from Matthew Spurlock. Um, two things came to mind immediately. The first one was the Back to the Future series, because here was another really good series of movies where you never really had a worthy video game adaptation. And let me tell you, when I say that, I mean in the United States. 
because I don't know if anyone has seen the recent Angry Video Game Nerd video where he actually re-reviews the Back to the Future games, but as you've seen, there actually really was a good Back to the Future game, but it was only made in Japan, which makes no butt-fucking sense because the, the movies are American. So why would you make the best version of a game for a movie that was made in America? Duh! Fucking morons. Um, so yeah, I, I say Back to the Future, really, the series had potential. The fact that it's the same kind of characters, but you have three movies to work with. I really think you could make a good game from start to finish that encompasses everything. But, I don't know if anyone's heard this, but at the recent Penny Arcade Expo that just ended, I think it was last week, it was actually announced that there is a company working on a Back to the Future game. It's actually going to be more of a Xbox Live Arcade DLC type of a game. And from what they're saying, it's going to be in the spirit of, like, The Secret of Monkey Island. So it's going to be like an adventure game where you travel through time, you're looking for items to solve puzzles. It's going to have tongue-in-cheek kind of humor. But the coolest thing is that they actually are starting to get some of the voice actors from the original movie. In fact, they already signed Christopher Lloyd. So, holy shit, the Doc is actually going to be in a Back to the Future game? See what I mean? They're going right along with what they did with Ghostbusters, getting the original actors, the original writers to put that together. It seems like this is going in the right direction. So, I'm very pleased about that news. I'm looking forward to that game. They're saying it's going to be out in winter. So, it's probably going to be 2011 by the time that comes out. Um, but the other game that I really thought about in my head, I was like, what about if they made a Gremlins game? And when I say that, I mean a real, like, you know, a current day Gremlins game, and it could actually be done very seriously. Maybe you could do it from like the perspective of Gremlins 2, where you maybe a worker in this uh, this clamped towers. I don't know if anyone who saw Gremlins 2, but basically the story is the Gremlins get loose inside this giant utopian uh, tower in New York City, where basically this guy has television studios, uh, botanical gardens, uh, all kinds of amusement um, businesses. Uh, all kinds of stuff in his tower, and his name is Clamp, and he's like a, he's supposed to be like a Donald Trump type of a, a character. And I thought, gee, imagine if they actually took that, and instead of making it cartoony, they actually made it scary, like making it a survival horror game where you're just a worker, and you have to find all the characters from the movie and team up with them to try to get items and things to get by these monstrous uh, uh, gremlins that are in here. And remember in that movie, that was when they had all these cool mutations. Like they had a spider gremlin, a bat gremlin, an electric gremlin. And they could be like bosses in the game where you could try to get off the level and to get to the elevator, you gotta beat the electric gremlin. You gotta figure out how to do it. And there's a big, you know, big effects boss battle. I think that would be really cool. Um, and I'm surprised that they haven't done anything like that. It seems like a lot of the old movie franchises are coming back. And what I'm actually kind of thinking is maybe they're waiting for a gremlins reboot which might actually happen, considering that Gremlins was made by Steven Spielberg. It was actually a successful movie series, and it made a lot of money. And since, you know, Hollywood has absolutely no fucking talent or originality anymore, and all they do is reboot the same stories over and over, I wouldn't be surprised if in the next decade we saw another Gremlins movie or a reboot of the series. And if that were to happen, you're probably going to see a game tie-in, and you might see something like that. But that was just my idea of a game. Just throw it out there. I think it might be a really good concept. Um couple more quick questions. We'll get this done. Almost done here. Um, let's see. This question says, Hi Phil, my name's Michael. I was wondering during a video of a YouTube comedian named Jovian 0011G. I don't know. Some real weird fucking thing. But anyway, I wonder how funny it would be if you would partner for a game playthrough together with him. Because when you think about it, it's a great match. When you put someone who is funny for his jokes, Jovian, so you must be talking about the other guy, and you put someone who is retarded funny gaming. Fuck you, Michael Contreras. Retarded funny gaming? The fuck's that supposed to mean? I'm funny. I've got funny jokes. Fuck your mother. Anyway. <laughs> Up next, we've got a question from OJ Taylor, and he says, this is another good question. I want your opinion on 3D. In particular, gaming in 3D and 3D television. I know that Killzone 3 is being developed in 3D, and there are supposedly more 3D games on the way. What's your opinion? Personally, I have my doubts, and mainly because at the moment it seems too expensive. Firstly, you have to buy a 3D, a 3D TV, yes. Then you have to buy a pair of glasses, and then you have to buy a special DVD player or game player that can support the 3D. So, what is your opinion of all this 3D hoopla? And again, that's from OJ Taylor. Um, 
I don't know if anyone realizes this, but 3D has existed for quite a long fucking time. This is nothing new. It's just a new kind of 3D that they're trying to push down people's throats because it's not slightly as bad as the last version, which needed you to have colored glasses. Um, it's this simple to me. 3D is like a rumble pack. It doesn't really add anything to the game experience. It's completely superfluous to the actual plot, the gameplay, the story of the game. It's not needed. It's just a kind of a, 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 a little add-on. And being that what he says is a very good point, it's very expensive to buy a 3D TV, to get these 3D glasses, to get something that's compatible with it. It's a hassle right now and it's not worth it. Now, what's to say that in five years it doesn't become super cheap or maybe it's integrated into everything? Well, that would be something different. But the other thing that I completely disagree with is that you still have to wear these fucking glasses. No one wants to sit around in their house wearing sunglasses. You look like an asshole, and you don't get to see a clear movie. What everyone's been saying with these 3D movies is, wow, it's really great that they filmed Avatar and Resident Evil Afterlife in 3D, but I can't see the fucking movie. I put the glasses on, the movie's blurry as shit, and then I get a headache after like 20 minutes, because your mind's not supposed to be seeing two different versions of the same image to that extent. And by the way, the other thing... You ever notice something that real life really isn't that much 3D? Like if someone throws a softball at you, do you really see this thing coming at you? Like no, you see a 2D thing, you get hit in the fucking face. Real vision has depth perception to a point, but not to the point where these 3D movies are trying to push it. So it's unnatural, it gives you headaches, it's expensive, it's an unneeded gimmick. I personally think 3D sucks dick, and that these people who are trying to push this stupid fat down our throat should suck my balls. So. Get 3D movies out of the theaters. I don't want to pay $15 to see a 3D movie. I want to pay the regular $10 that you usually rate me to see the movie. And uh, I don't care about 3D gaming. You won't be able to videotape it properly. It'll probably be a worse experience because everything will be blurry. Fuck this shit, really. Stop worrying about this bullshit technology that no one's asking for and worry about making better plot, better gameplay, and better graphics. Duh! It's the three things that people pay for, not these stupid gimmicks. That's my little rant about 3D. Sorry, I know I went on a little bit of a, uh, a rant there. Okay, <clears throat> two more questions and we're done. Number one. Hey, Phil, I was wondering, who do you think is the sexiest chick out of these people? Bonnie, Abigail, both from Red Dead Redemption, Madison from Heavy Rain, that chick off of Singularity, Lightning and Fang from Final Fantasy XIII, Hephaestus' wife, and Athena from God of War III, and that's from Winslow Morgan. Well, Winslow... My opinion is that you need to seek professional help because none of those women actually exist. They're just really gaming characters. And if you're actually sexually, sexy, uh, uh, sexually attracted to any of those women, you need to seek uh, a psychiatrist or possibly a sex coach. Okay, uh, two more. Actually, there's two more really quick questions. The next one I've gotten from about 5 billion fucking people. And the question is... Hey DSP, can you give me a random shout out on YouTube? I try to make videos and I'm like a shout out. Can you give me a shout out? Can you mention me? Well, let me tell you something. If I give everyone a shout out, whoever asked me for a shout out, every time a video was made, this is how my video would start. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's DSP, and I just want to give a shout out to Abigail, Adam, uh, you know, Ashley, uh, Bob, Billy, Ben, Benjamin. Benjamin Buttons, like, I'll be here for the next fucking five hours giving shout-outs because everyone on the planet is looking for me to give them love when I don't know who the fuck anyone is. And don't get me wrong, I appreciate you know, my viewers and my fans, but don't ask me for something silly like that. No, I can't give you a shout-out because if I give you a shout-out, I have to give the other 5,000 people who have asked me for shout-out shout-outs, in which case I'll never make another video. It'll just be me giving everyone shout-outs. So chill the fuck out. All right, last question. Hey Phil, I have a question for you. Obviously you enjoy playing games, but have you ever considered or would you consider getting into game development yourself? If so, what type of game would you be interested in, in developing? Thanks, keep up the good work from R. Fletcher 90 In a nutshell, I've had two really good, uh, at least in my opinion, ideas for games. One of them would be a fighting game where the fighters are actually professional fighting game players. So it would be like, you'd really be able to do Daigo versus Justin Wong, and maybe Justin would fight like Rufus, and Daigo would fight like Ryu, because that's his main character. And maybe you could pick, like, 50 to 100 people across the globe who are the best fighting game players in the world, and you could each have them fight in their own respective favorite fighter styles, or maybe even have them do their own custom style. And of course the game would be 2D, it would have to be 2D, because everyone knows the best fighters made have always been 2D and always will be 2D, so... <clears throat> 
that's my idea for a fighting game. Um, I do have an idea for one more type of game. And in this type of game, what you'd basically do is it would be kind of like, a, maybe it would either be like an alien invasion plot, or maybe it's like an end of the world biblical shit's going on, or something's just going wrong in the world. And so, it's I would have like a central location, so maybe like it starts in New York City, and what happens is all these people from around the globe kind of go to New York to try to save the world. But think of it this way, it could be like the biggest team-up amalgamation of games ever. So like, it would be like, the Marine from Doom 3, Duke Nukem, fucking, you know, McTavish from the Modern Warfare series. You know, every FPS per person from every FPS game ever is in the game, and you can play as them, and if you pick them, you actually get to play in the style of their respective game. So if you're McTavish, you, you're Soap, you could actually have, like, perks and shit, like, for Modern Warfare. If you're the Doom Marine, you can have the BFG. If you're, you know, uh... A guy from another FPS game, you would get whatever, like Half-Life, maybe you get the Gravity Gun, or something like that. Or Portal, maybe you can play the girl from Portal, and you don't have a weapon, you just get the Portal Gun, but you have to find ways to get through the stage with the Portal Gun. So, and it would be co-op, too, that would be the other cool thing, I think, is that it could be like a four-player co-op, where four different styles of gaming could all be incorporated to try to beat the stage. And maybe you'd have co-op stages that require you to do certain puzzles because of that gameplay style that you've selected, so... I think that's a really cool idea. I also know it'll never fucking happen because trying to get all those companies to license their characters to all be in the same game will never happen. But that's kind of like my, again, it's like an all-star. If you had a fighting game, it would be like the best fighting game players from around the world get to play in their own favorite styles. Well, same thing. If you could have an FPS game where everyone could play in their own favorite style and pick their favorite character, I think that would be pretty cool. But never going to happen, unfortunately. So, anyway, that's it for another DSP Inbox. Up next is Halo Reach starting tomorrow, which is the uh, 11, 12, 13th, I want to say? No, 14th. Tomorrow is the 14th of September, 2010. Halo Reach will start. I'll start with the campaign, obviously, play through that, and then probably this weekend I'll be trying out the multiplayer. And yes, I will actually be doing the multiplayer of Halo Reach. It's actually going to happen because I actually did like the multiplayer of Halo 3, so I'm looking forward to this. And then keep in mind that Sony Move comes out this weekend uh, as well, so look out for that. Um, so that's it, DSP. I hope I answered a lot of your questions. Again, check me out on Twitter. They call me DSP for updates on what's going on during this season. And feel free to keep sending me your questions to dspinbox at hotmail.com. That's how you can get your question to me, and maybe I'll answer it in the next DSP Inbox video. So raise your steins, and I'll see you guys later. Thanks a lot for tuning in.